We can never do enough to defeat this threat that's killing our soldiers, our service members in theater. And I look a mother and I look a wife in the eye and I tell them how much we're concerned about that we care about their tragic loss. And it makes me want to come back to uh, Team Picatinny and work harder and harder and harder to defeat IEDs because they are hurting our soldiers. They're impacting our family members in a big way. Uh, and we need to defeat this threat. A priority here at Picatinny Arsenal that has led to the invention of the swords robot, Packbot, and the Talon. You may remember the Talon for its work at the World Trade Center recovering victims' bodies in the wake of the September 11th attacks. Today, these robots are the eyes, arms, and legs of military EOD teams those charged with explosive ordnance disposal or getting rid of IEDs and other explosive threats. With EOD it's always been dangerous because we're the ones that go down on areas that everybody else is leaving from. Generally we go down on a site to render safe the site and make it safe for soldiers or civilians to go back into the area. So basically with anything like that there's an inherent risk. All our R&D research and development that we do here is based off of the experience of our NCOs and requests from the field. The EOD community will request certain type of technology and we'll try to get that technology out to them. Sounds simple enough until you take into account the enemy soldiers and scientists are facing. When a bomber builds a bomb, it's up to the imagination of that individual bomber. So an IED can go from a coffee can one day to a Ford Escort the next day. So your, your IDs are always going to change. As are the tools made to counter them. Picatinny scientists are the first to admit EOD robots are a work in progress. One of the greatest challenges that we've had to overcome with regards to robotics in the role of EOD is situational awareness, meaning the ability for you to see, feel, and understand what is around you. The difficulty with these robots is that it presents the image through cameras, which gives you only a two-dimensional image. We are working very hard to create full 360-degree real-time coverage so that the operator has complete situational awareness even though they're not there. Their efforts seem to be paying off. Meet Harv, or the head-aimed remote viewer. If a soldier hears a sound, they can immediately react to it, which you cannot do with the current joystick configuration on the robots. When the soldier turns his head, Harv turns his head. Likewise, the soldier sees what Harv sees. Still tweaking some of it. Harv still lacks a few finishing touches. He most likely won't be fielded until late 2007. But Picatinny scientists vow you'll see a lot more of his kind in the years to come. Advancement of robotics is here and it's going to stay. And get to the point where that robot is truly an extension of the person using it. The true goal is to have robots be able to conduct missions without any operators. That will be the technology that we will see 50 years from now, and it will become commonplace, as commonplace as seeing a talent on the battlefields of Iraq or Afghanistan today. Part of what makes robots an asset on the battlefield is the ability to operate them from a safe place. Likewise, Picatinny scientists and engineers are driven by the challenge to be able to successfully shoot artillery and deploy weapons from a safe place, far away from the enemy. They made major strides in this endeavor back in 1982 with the creation of the M198 howitzer. But after the first Gulf War, this much became obvious. The existing howitzer was too heavy, too slow, and needed a major overhaul. Picatinny took action. The Marine Corps' V-22 Osprey made history in April 1999, lifting and carrying the new lightweight M777A2 howitzer. 
So just how did Picatinny engineers manage to create a howitzer a full 7,000 pounds lighter than its predecessor? That's primarily been accomplished through the use of uh, titanium through uh, much of the structures. Um, the importance of lightening the load, it's improved its mobility and its deployability. Soldiers and Marines are now able to position and emplace the howitzer in about two minutes, compared to the previous setup time of around six minutes. And as for the weapon's range and accuracy, the new howitzer comes equipped with a digital fire control system. Probably at the heart and soul of it is this little box up here. This box receives inputs from a GPS device, from a vehicle motion sensor, three accelerometers, the Earth's rotation, three ring laser gyros. It takes in all these inputs and then it sends an output to the mission computer saying where the gun is in space and where the gun is pointing in space. That information then gets projected on displays. It's capable of launching 100 pound shells uh, more than 22 kilometers uh, with the conventional ammunition. With a rocket assist, it'll go out to 30 kilometers. And with the new Excalibur precision guided munition, uh, it'll provide uh, accurate fires out to 37 kilometers. That's more than 22 miles, a range once unheard of. With an accuracy and firepower that's improving every day thanks to Picatinny advances in the world of precision guided munitions. Precision guided munitions are very important today because of the effects of collateral damage when you're using conventional ammunition. Uh, conventional ammunition cannot distinguish where it's going. It's just basically going to fly ballistically to uh, the target. Uh, more often than not, it's uh, not going to hit the intended target, but land somewhere close to it. So in areas of the world like uh, Iraq or Afghanistan where there's uh, real restrictions on creating collateral damage, um, more often than not, indirect fire missions are being uh, canceled were not allowed. Munitions like Excalibur and other precision guided rounds are basically bullets with brains. A small computer inside the projectile tells it where to go and when to detonate. Peter Burke is taking technologies like Excalibur one step further with the creation of PGKs, or precision guided kits. They fit onto existing projectiles and almost instantly smarten them up. After the, uh, the PGK has been integrated onto the round, it's programmed with the um, EP ops, or Electronic Portable in Inductive Artillery Fuse Setter to tell the round time of flight information and also the GPS coordinate to fly to. So instead of missing a target by a few hundred meters, which is the uh, general accuracy at max range for artillery high explosive projectiles, the PGK will land within 50 meters of the target. There's nothing else like this in the world where you can just simply put a smart fuse onto a conventional round and make the entire round smart. You probably won't see gadgets like the PGK for a few years yet, but Picatinny engineers are already taking a very close look at the effectiveness and survivability of PGK and other precision guided munitions, a process that's not exactly endearing them to their neighbors. This is a soft catch gun, and we call it the scat gun. The purpose of this gun is an engineering tool to validate our modeling and simulation of precision munitions, guidance, navigation, and control, all the electronics to go into the today's modern projectiles. As its name suggests, the soft catch gun actually catches rounds like Excalibur and other precision guided projectiles. Only these test rounds are fired at a speed and pressure 25 percent greater than what a soldier in theater would use putting the electronics inside to the extreme test so the soldier in the battlefield can expect guarantees. Fire! 